Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the standard enthalpy of reactions and Hess's law. So previously we talked about what enthalpy is, but now we're going to apply that to reaction. And there are a couple of principles that you need to understand about enthalpy of reactions. The first principle is that how much energy you get out of a reaction, or have to put into a reaction for that matter, depends on the conditions of the system. Now, what do we mean by conditions? We're talking about physical and chemical properties of the system that will affect how things react. Things like temperature and pressure. Now, a lot of times we're going to be talking about things that happen at what we call standard conditions or standard state which is a set of conditions that we consider standard. To be at standard state, a system must have one bar of pressure, where a bar is about one atmosphere. In the olden days, standard state used to be one atmosphere, but a bar is related to the SI system of measurement, so obviously that is preferred. A system at standard state also is at a temperature of 25 Celsius, or 298.15 Kelvin. If you're talking about an aqueous solution, we're talking about concentrations of one molar for each of the reactants. So those are the three conditions that we talk about when we say something is at standard state in chemistry. And so when we talk about the enthalpy of reaction, Many times we're going to be talking about the standard enthalpy of reaction, which is not just delta H, but has this little superscript, not, uh, which means standard. So this is the value of enthalpy for a reaction that occurs under standard conditions and with the actual number of moles specified by the coefficients of the equation. For example, if you react one mole of propane, C3H8, with five moles of oxygen, that will give you three moles of carbon dioxide gas plus four moles of water, and those exact mole amounts will give you a standard enthalpy of reaction. So if this happens at one bar of pressure, and 25 Celsius, that will give you an enthalpy of negative 80.3 kilojoules. Okay, so the second principle is that the amount of energy released or consumed by a reaction is related to the number of moles that are involved in that reaction. So for example, you could take a small amount of hydrogen and combust it, so combine it with oxygen, and you get a small amount of heat energy out. But if, on the other hand, you combust a large amount of hydrogen, then you will get a huge amount of energy out. So going back to the equation that we we're talking about, if you have one mole of propane reacting with five moles of oxygen to give three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water, the enthalpy of this reaction is negative 80.3 kilojoules. But if you have twice as much of everything, so you start with two moles of propane and react that with 10 moles of oxygen to give six moles of carbon dioxide and 10 moles of water, that gives you twice as much heat energy, so negative 160.6 kilojoules. And you could also go the other direction and say, if I use up half a mole of propane by combining it with five halves, so basically two and a half moles of oxygen, that will produce one and a half, three halves, moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water and the standard enthalpy of that reaction will be minus 40.15 kilojoules, so half of what we started with. If we have this reaction where we have four moles of methyl nitrate reacting with seven moles of oxygen to give us four moles of carbon dioxide, six moles of water, and four moles of nitrogen dioxide with this standard enthalpy, 
if someone asks you, hey, um, I'm going to react this number of moles, one of the things you can do is you can go through and compare and say, okay, I used to have four moles, now I have 16, that's four times. Go through and double check. So you'd say seven times four would be 28, four times four would be 16. And so you can double check to make sure that you have exactly four times of everything. And then you can go through and say, well, if I have four times of all my reactants and four times of all my products, I also have four times the standard enthalpy. And so you can multiply that out and get negative 9,766.4 kilojoules. Now we're gonna talk about another principle of enthalpy of reaction, which is what happens when you have a reverse reaction. So for example, if you put together two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen, you get one mole of water and the enthalpy of that reaction is negative 285.8 kilojoules. But what if you did the reverse? What if you took liquid water and you split the water so it ended up as hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, which in fact you may have done in lab? you're basically doing the reaction backwards. That's why we call it a reverse reaction. And the enthalpy will be the exact reverse of the enthalpy of the forward reaction. So our enthalpy here would be plus 285.8 kilojoules. So when you did this in lab, remember the reaction did not happen on its own. You had to put energy into it. You had to connect your battery. Okay, so now we're gonna come to this thing where, that we call Hess's Law. And Hess's Law is a law that is based on the fact that enthalpy is a state function. Remember, previously I mentioned that a state function is any function where it doesn't matter how you get to the final result. You could take many different paths to get to the final result and all that matters is what's the difference between where you started and where you finished. So we use this example of the skyscraper. So imagine that you have a doctor's appointment here on the 90th floor at about 900 feet elevation. Now, if someone were to ask you how you get 900 feet up the skyscraper, the obvious example is you get in the elevator, you start at the bottom and you go all the way up to the 90th floor. But what if you get there and you realize you're actually half an hour early because you didn't remember the time of your appointment correctly? You might say, hey, you know what? I want to go up to the top story and do some sightseeing. So you could go from the ground floor all the way up to the top floor. And then after you looked around Manhattan a bit from a very high elevation, you might take the elevator down. And in either of these cases, you end up at 900 feet. But if you were to calculate how you got there, in the first instance, you started at zero and you went to 900. In the second instance, let's say you went from zero up to um, 1600, and then you went down 700 feet. So in that case, you would be going up 1600 minus 700, equals 900. You both end up at the same place. Why would you want to calculate getting somewhere by a roundabout route? Well, sometimes the direct route is not something that we can actually measure. And that's why we use Hess's law in chemistry. Hess's law basically says that the overall enthalpy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps in the reaction. So let's look at a simple example of what that might look like. This example is what we call the Haber process, the making of ammonia. And what happens here, we can think of it as maybe a two-step reaction where first you're putting together some hydrogen and some nitrogen and you make hydrazine. And that's an endothermic reaction with a standard enthalpy of 95.4 kilojoules. In the next step, the hydrazine reacts with hydrogen and makes two moles of ammonia. And you could see that's a very exothermic reaction. Now what Hess's law tells us is that the overall reaction 
is basically something we can do by just adding up what happens in each of these steps. We can think of that two ways. The first way is let's just add up the enthalpies in the steps, which is what Hess's law tells us we can do. And we get a standard enthalpy of reaction of minus 92.2 kilojoules. But what reaction is that an enthalpy for? Well, we can figure that out by adding what's in these steps. So if we add up everything on the reactant side, both in step one and step two, we get that. And then we add up everything that's on the product side, and then we can put that down there. So you can see this is very much like for example, adding up our two half reactions in a redox reaction. And you can go through and find the net reaction by seeing, for example, if there's anything that's on both sides of the reaction that you could get rid of, which we have right here. And you'll also notice that we have uh, two hydrogens here and a hydrogen there. So we can combine those and we're going to get three hydrogens and a nitrogen, giving us two NH3. So now you could see we've added up the steps of the reaction and we've added up the enthalpy of the steps of the reaction. So we have the overall net reaction and the overall enthalpy of the reaction. So that's how we use Hess's law in a multi-step reaction. Now this one worked out really nice, but a lot of times what you're going to do when you're using Hess's law is you have a reaction you want to find the enthalpy for, but you don't have the enthalpy for that reaction. What you then look for is, do I have enthalpies of other reactions that I can add up to get the reaction I'm looking for? Let me show you an example of that. So here's the sort of problem you're likely to see when you're doing a Hess's law problem. So you need to determine the enthalpy of reaction for this reaction where we're taking dinitrogen oxide plus nitrogen dioxide and making three nitrogen oxides. And you could see that we're given three possible reactions that might be useful for us. Now, I'm just going to say that in Gen Chem, I'm always going to be giving you the sub reactions that you're going to use. But if you're actually trying to do this in real life, you may have many possible reactions and you have to hunt to find the ones that work for Hess's law. Okay, so how do we do this? I start usually on the left hand side of the equation that I'm trying to get to. So for example, here we have N2O gas, and then I'm going to look through my possible equations for something that contains N2O gas. And you can see that this equation has N2O gas in it, and so I am going to use that. But you'll notice that I only want one N2O gas, and this one has two. So what I want to do is I want to take exactly half of this equation, and so I'm going to multiply everything here by one half. So half of 2N2O is N2O, half of 2N2 is N2, and half of one oxygen gas is half of an oxygen gas. Oh, and the enthalpy then will be half of that, so it will be negative 81.6 kilojoules. Let's now look at the next thing, which is NO2 gas. Do we have NO2 gas anywhere in these equations? And the answer is yes. Here it is right here. So again, we have the issue that we have two NO2 gases in this equation we're given. We only want one, so we better multiply that by a half. But also, you see that I put flip here because what's going on here is that we have the NO2 gas in the product side in the equation we're given, but we want it on the reactant side. So basically what I'm going to do, this is the equation we're given, and I am going to reverse the products and reactants. 
When we do that, remember, we're now using the reverse reaction. And so our enthalpy is going to be half of negative 113.1. And then we're going to change the sign. So it's going to be positive 56.55 kilojoules. You can see that we still have one equation left. And you might wonder, what am I going to do with that? Because that has N2 and O2 in it. And I don't see N2 and O2 in my final reaction. So one thing it's sometimes useful to do, a little trick I have, is to just say, okay, let me look at these two equations that I have so far. Let's just add them up. We'll take everything on the left side and make that reactants everything on the right side, make that products. And so this is what we've got. And we can go through and say, okay, let's see, we've got nothing to cancel out yet, but we do have two one half O2s that we can combine into a single O2. And now compare it. We have an N2O, which we want. We have an NO2, which we want, but we have these N2 and this O2 that we don't want, that we need to get rid of. And we also have this NO, we want that to be three NOs. And so now you can look at the equation up there and say, okay, how can I do this? I want more NOs on my product side. I want an N2 and an O2 on the reactant side. So it will cancel out the unwanted N2 and O2 in the product side. And so let's just take that top equation there and let's just write it the way it is right now. Okay, so there we go. And now you can see if we add this all up, we're gonna get N2O2 plus NO2 plus N2 plus O2 in the reactants, and then N2 plus half O2 plus NO plus half O2 plus two NO in the products. And of course we can cross out our N2s and our O2s and combine our NOs, and that leaves us with what we're looking for, so we got it correctly. And now let's just add up the delta H's, and we have delta H being 155.65 kilojoules. So here we have another problem where we're trying to determine the enthalpy of reaction for this reaction. Ethylene, C2H4, plus six fluorine gas, making two carbon tetrafluorides and four hydrofluoric acid gas. Once again, let's start with our first thing on the left, C2H4. And you can see that we have a C2H4 down here. Um, we want C2H4 in the reactant side. This one is in the product side. Um, so we do have to flip that equation around to get the reverse reaction. And so of course our formally positive enthalpy is now going to be a negative enthalpy, negative 52.30 kilojoules. Next up, we have six fluorine gases. Now this one, people often have trouble with this one because we have two things that have fluorine gas in them. So how do you know how much of each to get from where? Well, if you see something like that, skip it and just go on to the next one. So next up is 2CF4, which as you can see, here's the CF4 on the second equation, but we need two carbon tetrafluorides and this one only has one. So let's multiply this whole thing by two and that's what we get. Again, the enthalpy of that step is gonna be two times negative 681, so negative 1362 kilojoules. All right, finally, we're looking for four hydrofluoric acids and we have hydrofluoric acid down here. Again, we've got two HFs in the thing we're given and we want four, so we're gonna multiply it by two, the whole entire thing. So that's gonna be two H2 plus two F2 gives us four HF. And again, we multiply the enthalpy times two. Now let's add our reaction up and make sure that we have the correct overall reaction. So we're gonna add up our reactants. 
we'll add up our products. And then what do we have that we can cancel out? We can get rid of our carbons and our hydrogens. And we also have 4F2 plus 2F2, which gives us 6F2. So you can see that we do have the same reaction that we're looking for. So because we know that we've got the right reaction, we can go ahead and add up all the enthalpies and we get a total enthalpy of reaction of negative 2,488.3 kilojoules. So Hess's law helps us to find manageable ways to determine the enthalpy of a reaction. If we don't have the information we need, we can look for other information that we can put together in ways that help us determine the reaction that we want to know. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.